Edith Harel Shemesh has lived her life knowing that some members of her family carry a genetic heart abnormality. It is a condition that can lie dormant until suddenly triggered by something, and then it begins degrading the heart muscle. When I was 18, uh, the doctors uh, in the army saw that something was different in my heart. But I kept my life as usual, knowing that uh, my father has a heart disease, which is called a restrictive cardiomyopathy. My father uh, underwent heart transplant in uh, 1996. The surgery was a success, but uh, two weeks afterwards, there was complications and he didn't make it. Edith did not exhibit any signs of the condition until her first daughter, Roni, was born. Then she began to show the symptoms, which include irregular heartbeat, fatigue, and an inability to sustain vigorous physical activity. Despite this, Edith continued living her life and building her family. After uh, Mika, my youngest daughter, was born, I started to feel that the disease is progressing. But I, I put it aside. All my life, I didn't let the disease control me or control my life. I think the worst thing is the fear because you know that uh, it's not gonna be, it's not gonna get better and there's no cure. All these years, Edith was being treated at Sheba Tel Shomer Medical Center. During the, the checkups, they were uh, always uh, trying to let uh, me live as possible as I can like a normal uh, person. But there was that day when my doctor, uh, Professor Freimark, he said, listen, I have to tell you something, and I'm going to tell you something, but I don't want you lying on the floor crying, and you can handle it. And he said, uh, we want to get you on a list for heart transplant. I felt like uh, he just gave me a death verdict, and I'm just going to count my days now until I found my uh, death in the surgery. Terrified to reach the same fate as her father, she refused the surgery. But her doctors at Chiba Medical Center helped her overcome the fear. Their loving care, combined with therapeutic counseling, convinced Edith to undergo the transplant. So I just had to make that change in my, in my mind and understand that uh, what happened to my father, it, it doesn't mean that it will happen to me. The surgery was a success and Edith continued her treatment at Sheba under the care of leading cardiologist Professor Yael Peled. I think that one of the things that give the courage to go into this stage is the team that treat you. And she gave trust. We promised her that we will do the best for her and we did it. I didn't know how lucky I was, but uh, this I know today, that uh, she is my doctor. She's so rare. I don't think that uh, you can find a doctor like her. She's always ready to answer. Her phone is always open. You can call her in the middle of the night, and if you don't call her, then she gets very mad. Why didn't you call me? She's my savior, my warrior, and uh, I'll always be grateful for her. Unfortunately, the Shemesh family story does not end there. In 2021, Edith's youngest daughter, Mika, began to exhibit the signs of her family's genetic cardiomyopathy. Mika's condition began to deteriorate to the point that her only hope for survival was a heart transplant. When she was uh, about 10, and we realized that she also has the family disease. <laughs> Together with Professor Peled, the family decided that they would join the wait list for a heart for Mika. It's so heartbreaking, that's the word, because first of all, I know it's not my fault, but it, it came from my family, and um, giving her such a present, 
that's uh, a lot of uh, blame to take. Mika had to undergo a procedure before the heart transplant. They wanted uh, Mika to go through a procedure, also getting an electric shock, so she can be uh, able to go through a, a surgery like that, a heart transplant. Her pulse didn't recover. It stayed very, very low. They took her to intensive care. They gave her medicine uh, for this situation, and the pulse got a little high that evening. We went through the night, and in the morning, uh, Mika collapsed. We put her on ECMO support. We did not have time. We were very short of time, and Edith was looking at me and asking me to save her kid. And I promised Edith that this is what we are going to do. It was the 2nd of January in the afternoon. Professor Pellet came to us and she told us, we have a heart for Mika. We were uh, guarding the heart like it was ours until Mika got it. We took the heart, the donated heart, and uh, we put it, we put it in an ice box, and then we drive with the heart but everyone did the best. At something at four o'clock, I don't remember so good the hours, but she came out and she told us that it was a success. Professor Pellet is uh, so uh, committed uh, to Mika and uh, we're so thankful for her of saving her life and we'll always be grateful. We are trying to make the best of all a hard donations we have, we are leading in this and we're making the impossible possible. I'm going to go to the hospital with Professor Yael Pellet, who has saved my life and my life.